incoming kindergarten students. I'm Mrs. White, the principal here at Sugarbush Elementary, home of the owls, and this is our school mascot, Shippy. We are so excited that you are coming here in the fall. Kindergarten is such a fun grade. There are so many things to learn and new friends to make. We are going to be working really hard to make sure next school year is amazing for you here at Anchor Bay. There are a few things you can work on during the summer to make sure you're ready for kindergarten. Next year we'll hear from three of our district kindergarten teachers. They want to make sure you know all about kindergarten expectations and will share skills you can work on over the summer so that you'll be ready. We'll see you in a couple months. Bye! Hi, my name is Sandy Davis and I'm a kindergarten teacher with Anchor Bay Schools. On behalf of all the kindergarten teachers, I would like to thank you for taking the time to learn about kindergarten readiness. Our goal is to provide you with ideas and tips on how to help your child achieve the foundation skills needed to begin kindergarten. Today I will outline the kindergarten readiness skills and I will also discuss fine motor skills. I'll begin with kindergarten readiness. Prior to entry into kindergarten, your child should be able to recognize their name in print. They need to be able to find their cubby or their table seat or any supplies in the classroom that might be labeled with their name. They also need to be able to write their name independently without needing to copy it off of a name tag. Your child should be able to recite the alphabet by saying it clearly and slowly. They need to know how to name all of the capital letters, and a great way to practice that is just by making some flashcards or using magnetic letters or foam letters. Your child should be able to understand rhyming words. So one way that I like to practice it in the class is just by reading a lot of books with rhyming words in them. I also like to do something called echo rhyming, where I'll say two words and then they repeat after me. So if I said cat hat, your child repeats cat hat. Now they're hearing what rhyming sounds like. And then eventually you want to get to the point where they can say yes or no if two words rhyme. They also need to demonstrate counting skills. So if you gave your child a pile of objects with 10 or less objects in them, would they be able to count them correctly? They need to be able to identify, write, and sequence numbers from one to 10. They need to recognize two um, dimensional shapes. That would be the circle, square, rectangle, and triangle. And then in kindergarten, we're gonna teach them the hexagon and move on to three dimensional shapes. Your child should be able to sit and listen attentively while somebody is reading a book to them. They need to know about the different parts of a book. For example, the cover, the front cover, the back cover. They need to be able to know where the words are or what words are. Um, they need to know what illustrations or pictures are, and then also different types of punctuation. They should be able to verbalize and share information that they're learning to others, either things that they've learned at school or things that they're doing at home. They need to have self-help skills. That would include things like zipping their jacket or their pants or buttoning skills. They also need to be able to use the bathroom independently. Your child should be able to use scissors, crayons, glue, and pencils correctly. And they need to use a correct pencil grip and scissor grip, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Now I'd like to discuss fine motor skills. I'm going to start by explaining the difference between fine motor and gross motor. Gross motor is those core stabilizing muscles that we use when we're standing or walking and running and sitting. It also includes eye and hand coordination. We call those ball skills. So the ability to throw a ball or catch a ball or kick the ball. Now fine motor development, we're talking then about the coordination of the muscles that are in your hands, your fingers and your wrist. And these skills are needed to complete paper and pencil tasks, such as writing or coloring and drawing or cutting and gluing. And these are the types of tasks that we um, spend a lot of time at doing in a kindergarten day. I wanna start by talking about scissors. So at this age, your child should know their dominant hand. Are they right-handed, are they left-handed? Now, when they're looking at their scissors, their thumb is placed into the small opening and their fingers go into the larger opening. The thumb should always be facing the ceiling. Now something you can try with your child is you can move the index finger out and only leave the other fingers in the big area. This allows a little more stability when they're cutting by keeping that index finger out. Their other hand needs to hold the paper and direct and guide the paper as they're cutting. And again, as they're cutting, they wanna make sure again that the thumb is always facing up towards the ceiling and that they're always cutting away from their body. 
Now I'd like to take a minute to talk about the pencil grip. Sometimes we see kids and they come to kindergarten and they're still holding their pencil in a fist grip. Or they're, they're resting their um, pencil on their pinky or their ring finger, so they're depending heavily on those two fingers when they're holding their pencil. These can be indications of children that have a weaker fine motor development. So what we teach the kids is they need to hold their pencil with their index finger and their thumb. So they pinch the pencil towards the end with the lead. The pencil then rests between those two fingers and then we take the middle finger and it sits on the middle finger for stability. Their pinky and ring finger should be tucked below. Now again, if your child is depending on that pinky or ring finger, something you can try is by taking a puff ball and having them squeeze the puff ball with those two fingers. Now those fingers are busy and the uh, ring finger or the index finger, the thumb and the middle finger are then there to, to hold their pencil. If that doesn't work, there are a lot of commercially made pencil grips that you can purchase and you just have to try a couple, see which works best for your child. There are a lot of ways to help your child strengthen and improve fine motor development. And hopefully many of these items are things that you already have at home or you could find at your local dollar store. I'm going to start with Play-Doh. Kids love Play-Doh. And Play-Doh is great for fine motor development. That squeezing and manipulating of the Play-Doh. They can take the Play-Doh and they can roll it into balls. And then they can count out how many balls they have. And now you're adding math skills. Or they can roll it into a snake and form it into an alphabet letter. And now you're incorporating language arts. We also like to do lacing activities. So here I took a colander and I took some pipe cleaners and I just weaved it through. Or I changed it up a little bit by taking this that I found in my cupboard and I just took a shoelace and I weaved it through the holes. They also could do, um, take straws for example, cut them up into smaller pieces and thread them onto a piece of yarn and make a necklace or a bracelet. I took the pony beads and I threaded onto a pipe cleaner and I separated them by color. So now I can talk about patterning skills. And I found some no noodles in my cupboard and I just uh, slid those onto a pipe cleaner too. Those are all different types of lacing activities. We also like to do tweezer activities in class and you can just use the normal, regular, standard tweezer that you might have at home but they do actually make tweezers at the dollar store for kids. And I liked this one because it actually had an indentation for their fingers and their thumb. So now they actually have the proper grip. You can see that squeezing motion is really good for building the muscles in that wrist area. Another thing they can try is um, squeezing a water bottle. So take an empty bottle, fill it with water, have them go outside. This can be one of their chores and they can water your plants for you. And that helps with fine motor development as well. There's also a lot of clips out on the market now that you can use. And for example, these are hair clips. So again, it's that squeezing action that helps build those muscles. Um, there's a, a ton of different um, clothespins now, all shapes, sizes, and colors. You could use binder clips. And these clips I found in the sewing department. And they come in lots of colors. They can use the different colors. They can. Um, stick them onto maybe a plate or a piece of paper and they can do maybe patterning activities with that as well. I also like to do cutting activities with the kids. They love it in the class. I just sit them with a big bowl and they practice their scissor skills. I start with smaller paper so it's just one snip and then I move to a little larger paper so now it's maybe two or three snips. I also like to do paper uh, ripping, shredding with them. So they're just taking their fingers, they're tearing at the paper into smaller pieces. This is great if you have junk mail that you need to have shredded, you now have your own personal shredder at home. Uh, it's really important to also continue to do coloring and drawing activities with your child. Sometimes the children will say, I don't really care for coloring. But what I found is that I needed to find a way to motivate them. And so what I tried with the kids is do something called directed drawing. There's books to teach kids how to draw. There's also a lot of YouTube videos, and it's really fun. So um, you can have them, it takes you through the step-by-step -step how to draw something, and then maybe now they're more motivated to color. Although sometimes kids get frustrated by directed drawing as well. So something I've done is I'll do the drawing for them with a pencil, I give them a marker or a highlighter, they have to now trace over what I've drawn. That is still building fine motor development. 
eventually they will get less frustrated, they'll build their confidence, and you'll find that they're doing those drawing activities on their own. I also like to use stickers. Here I just drew a shape of a rectangle with a highlighter, and then I took stickers to outline it. That taking on and off of the stickers really builds those muscles in the wrist, the fingers, and the hand. I just want you to remember that it doesn't have to be anything fancy. The key is just to make it fun for your child. Sometimes just changing the tool that they're using from a pencil to a marker or a colored pencil or the type of container you're using, sometimes that's just enough to motivate them to want to do it some more. It feels like something brand new to them. So just remember, have fun. Fine motor development is good for all children. Now I'd like to introduce Mrs. Hunt and she's going to speak to you about language arts. Hi, my name is Trina Hunt and I am a kindergarten teacher for Anchor Bay and I'm going to talk to you today about language arts and activities you can do to get ready for language arts in kindergarten. Um, language arts, th arts throughout the year in kindergarten encompasses listening, speaking, handwriting, reading genres, phonics, spelling, and writing. Kindergarten is the foundation for all that we learn. So everything that we learn in kindergarten, we build upon it. By the time your child leaves kindergarten, they need to be able to read at a level four book and they need to be able to write a story with three, at least three sentences that they've come up with independently. Um, and kindergarten has really changed. When I first started teaching kindergarten 20 years ago, we introduced the letters, we introduced the sounds. Now the expectation is that your child knows their letters and their sounds when they walk in the door so that we can build upon them. So how do we get there? So today I'm gonna to show you some different activities to help increase their rhyme, their letter and sound knowledge to help them get to where they need to be to be successful in kindergarten. The first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is rhyme. Rhyme is something that children either they hear it or they don't. So how can you practice rhyme? A great way to practice rhyme is with books, rhyming books. Dr. Seuss has written numerous children's books with very silly um, words that are rhyming in there. And read the stories, the, the kids love them. They're, they're pretty silly in there. And you do not have to have a Dr. Seuss book. It can be any storybook that contains rhymes in there. Um, it doesn't have to be with a book. You can play games with your children. You, you know, when you're getting ready to go somewhere, you can say to them, hey, please go put on your boat. And hopefully they'll know that the word is coat instead of boat, boat, coat, rhyme. Um, you can play riddles, ask them try to solve your riddle. I'm thinking of an animal and it rhymes with jig. And hopefully they can come up with the word pig. So just repeated practice of hearing those sounds over and over again helps to develop their sense of rhyme. Um, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is reading. You are your child's first teacher. Before they come to preschool, before they go to kindergarten, they are with you. So if they see that you love to read or that you love to have a book in your hand, it's going to help foster their love of reading as well. Kids love to snuggle up with their parents. They can snuggle up with a book, with their mom, with their dad, grandma. They can snuggle up with a book buddy. Here's some of our favorites from our classroom. We have Pete the Cat and Pinkalicious and the Pigeon. Those are some of our classroom favorites. That doesn't have to be their book buddy. It doesn't have to be a character from a book. It could be their favorite old ratty stuffed animal they've had since they were born. Snuggle up, get a good book, and read together. Um, just hearing the book, to hear how the language flows is important for children. As you are talking to your child, you can talk to them about concepts of print. That just means the different parts of the book and what's inside. So talk, you know, this is the cover. When we open up the cover, we start reading. There's the title. These are the pictures. These are the words. Talk to them about the difference between the letters and the periods at the end. When you're done reading this, the story with them, ask them some questions. What did the main character do? How did she feel that way? That will help to develop their comprehension. Um, and read books over and over again. It just helps develop their, their vocabulary, their ability to listen, and their comprehension. Um, next thing I 
move on to identifying letters and their sounds. It is essential that your child knows their letters when they walk into the door. So if they're there, fantastic. You'll work on their sounds and you'll work on their writing. If they're not there, then they're, I'm gonna give you some ideas of things to do to practice. Start small, start with the letters of their name. If your child's name is Jack, cut up an index card, write their letter, oops, write the letters of their name right on there. Um, you can mix them up, put them in different orders, have them identify them out of order. Once they know the letters in their name, slowly start adding a couple more letters and just keep adding and adding until they get to know more letters of the alphabet. There's numerous things you can do to practice. Um, you can use Play-Doh, you can roll the dough, you can make the shapes of the different letters. You can use pipe cleaners. You can bend them to make the curves and the straight lines to make the different letters that you are learning. Um, you can fill a Ziploc bag and it's a squishy bag. Put in hair gel, pudding, soap. Just make sure you um, tape the top. You can practice making letters in there. Just from the dollar store, I have a, a board or a tray, you can put magnetic letters on there. You can fill it with salt, have your child write the letters in there. You can fill it with shaving cream to do the same things. Um, there are inexpensive puzzles that you can buy. This is from the dollar store. Um, you can write the letters of the alphabet on a piece of paper or print them by computer. Have your child trace them with highlighters or markers. Those are things that you can do to help practice. Give them a blank piece of paper and give them bingo dabbers. And you can put uh, make your different letters that way as well. Incorporate some sounds as you're practicing. Um, for example, this is an Easter egg and I have the uppercase letter on the top, the lowercase letter on the bottom inside is a rubber band so once they figure out what letter it is talk about the sound Rrr, rubber band i also have another one here it has the letter p we have uppercase p lowercase p and inside is a p -p -p penny um, you can play different games with sounds you can write letters on index cards and you can um, put them in order to play games and maybe you can play a game what's missing a b c d f g and your child can try to find the letter e um, you can play a game called up and down the stairs have your child sit at the bottom stair show them the letter ask them what sound does it make here this is the letter d if they tell you d, d, they can move up the stairs and keep moving up until they get all the way up to the top of the stairs a fun game that children seem to enjoy um, is a letter hunt so that you can make up get them a, a brown paper bag put a letter inside this one obviously has the letter s on it so here's the letter s the letter s says s have them search your house for things that start with the letter s we have items like a strawberry scissors straw spoon and a star and have them put them inside the bag um, another thing that you can do is give them a wipe off board. Children love wipe off boards. They can practice writing letters. You can have them, oh, what letter makes the k, k sound? Have them right there. If you don't have a wipe off board, a great alternative is a page protector. Just put a paper inside of a page protector and it will wipe off just like it, um, a wipe off board. This is an example of playing, you can make a bingo game and ask your child, uh, pull out a letter and say, oh, find the letter that says S, and they can cover up that one and, and play using the different sounds. Um, uh, an important thing I know is that sometimes you're busy. I understand that I'm a mom too. So I, I understand that sometimes you just need a few minutes to yourself. I don't normally promote videos, but these are two great ones to help with letters and sounds. You've had a long day, you need to get dinner ready, throw on a video. This one's called um, The Letter Factory, it's by Leapfrog. And this one is called Talking Words Factory. 
They have a, a tune the kids seem to just love. Um, this one helps them to identify all their letters. And once they have that, um, Talking Words fa Factory helps them with sounds, sounding out words, like you see the word cat here. And the next thing I want to talk to you about is writing. Give them some writing experiences. Like I said before, they can use a wipe off board. Give them um, the wipe off markers, have them write their names, sound out some words, have them try to write those words there. Um, give them paper. They can use plain white paper. They can use lined paper. Give them a variety of tools. If you mix it up, they, they tend to love it more. Highlighters, markers, colored pens, pencils, um, different activities or different writing utensils just makes it more fun. Just You just want to give them opportunities to write. A great way in the morning before they come down for breakfast, say, hey, um, you need to sign in your name today. Make sure you remind them to start up at the top, go down at the bottom and writing from left to right. Um, some activities you can do without supplies. You can play I spy. You know, I spy something that sounds like t -t. Maybe you're talking about a toy or a tree. Um, when you're riding in the car, they're in a captive audience. They need to, they're stuck there with you. So play rhyming games, chant out your ABCs, play that I spy game. If you're sitting and watching TV, practice writing the letters on each other's backs and try to guess what letters um, you're making. Most importantly, just keep your sessions short and fun. Start small and just add more as they can handle it. Two most important things, talk to your child, read to your child. It will do more for them than you, than you know. Thanks for listening today, and Mrs. McClelland is going to talk to you today about math. Hello everyone, my name is Carrie McClelland. I'm a kindergarten teacher in Anchor Bay. I'm here to share a few math ideas that you could do at home over the summer to get your child ready for kindergarten. I'd like to refer to you to the picture of math throughout the year. You will notice that there are six skill areas that we cover throughout the year in kindergarten. Number sense, geometry, patterns, graphing, measurement, and computation. I have a few things here that I'd like to share with you that you can find around your house to help get your child ready for kindergarten. The first thing I'd like to share is just practice counting with your child. We want to make sure by the end of the school year they should be able to count by ones to 100. So if you just practice counting while driving, I used to do that with my children. Um, you could count houses as you're driving by, but just practice counting. We wanna make sure that the children do not skip any numbers. Another thing that you could do is just give them a handful of grapes and have them count them. I mean, it could be anything, but we wanna make sure that you are making sure that they point and say each number as they're counting them so they have good one-to-one -one correspondence. So they don't say more than one number when they're counting just one grape. You can also do things like finding a, um, a paper plate, just writing a number on the paper plate and having them show you that number by putting things on the plate. They can practice fine motor by putting a paper clip on there or a clothespin. You can get a pair of tweezers and have them put small items on the plate. I have pom-poms, so we're putting four pom-poms on the number four plate. Being able to recognize those numbers, especially one through 10, when coming into kindergarten is very beneficial. Another thing that you can do is, I have this egg carton, and the numbers one through 12 are written in there. You can put a small piece of candy, I use Skittle or anything in there, shake it up, and whatever number it lands on, they have to tell you what that number is. They can show you by counting out small items. You can also make your own flashcards using, I used index cards, but you can use any kind of paper or card stock. Have them write the number, and show you what that number is. They, I use stickers on this one. They could draw small pictures. Um, they could use a hole punch and punch that many holes in the card to show you that number. For patterns, boys and girls can um, just look around the house, look on clothing. It's very, there's a lot of patterns on clothing, especially stripes. Have them tell you what the pattern is. Have them tell you what might come next. You could do a clapping pattern by just clap, snap, clap, snap, they can do that with you and tell you what comes next. 
For geometry, we go over two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. The basics are the square, circle, rectangle, and triangle. You can send them on a scavenger hunt throughout the house and have them find all of the items that are square and bring them to you. And you could do that for each shape. For graphing, one thing that I found helpful was if you have a fruit cereal, you could have them sort them by color. They can count how many are in each group. They can line the colors up and tell you which one shows more or less. You could also do that with um, items around your house. For instance, shoes. You can compare how many shoes one child has to the next. They can tell you who has more, who has less. For measurement, the boys and girls can practice measuring with everyday objects. If they use their hand, they can count how many hands it takes to measure a table to see how long a table is. They can use paper clips to measure how long a shoe is. For computation, we can come back to this egg carton and instead of putting one Skittle in there, you could put two Skittles, shake it up, and the two numbers that they land on, you can have them count out that many objects and tell you how many are in all. Some other things that you could get um, from the dollar store is just a deck of cards. And with a deck of cards, you can have your child compare two numbers, showing them the two numbers, having them tell you which one is bigger, which one is smaller. You can have them tell you what they are, use them as flashcards. You can even add them together, show them, you know, have them count how many are in all. You can get whiteboard markers from the dollar store and you can white write on a window, you can write on a mirror, have them do that, practice writing their numbers, drawing dots to show you a number. You can also occasionally find number puzzles at the dollar store. This one has the number, it has the dot, how many dots on each number show you how many, what the number is. So there are some fun um, things that you can also find at the dollar store. Another thing that you can find at the dollar store is pipe cleaners and beads. You can put 10 beads on the pipe cleaner and just tell them to show you random numbers. You can use two different colored beads doing five and five. You can make patterns with the beads on the pipe cleaners as well. So those are just a few fun ideas that I um, wanted to share with you to get ready for kindergarten in the fall. I would like to thank you for watching our virtual kindergarten readiness night video, and we look forward to seeing everyone in the fall. Thank you.